purpose of this webinar is to provide you with an overview of supporting social workers in core through the completion of their field activities. This webinar is specifically designed for those um, field advisors who are new, or if you're on an ongoing field advisor, this can be used as a refresher. My name is Tammy McCaleb, and I'm with Northern Academy uh, with UC Davis. And this webinar is being recorded um, in March of the year 2020. As you know, Core for Supervisors now provides you with some basic field advisor training as well as um, coaching training. So if you are going through Core for, Social, Core for Supervisors, effective um, January 2020, you will now automatically be receiving uh, the required trainings to be a field advisor. Um, however, this is an overview of some additional information that should be helpful to you regarding uh, completion of the field activities, how to uh, capture completion, um, and just some basics about our website and where to find things. So we do ask that you watch this through its entirety just to give you that information and let us know if you have any questions. The goals of this webinar are for you to understand the broader context of CORE 3.0. So we will go a little bit over the CORE um, framework. Becoming familiar with the role of the field advisor and understanding the structure of the field activities and the field guide. Uh, as we talked about, the field advisor role has some training requirements. Uh, most field advisors are the social worker's supervisor or other designated person, uh, depending on your agency, how you have it structured. Um, so that person is really, um, the role is to support the worker as they complete their field activities as they're going through core. There are some training requirements that um, for anyone who has not, is not a new social work uh, supervisor, as of February 2020. Um, if, you, if you're not a supervisor or if you are, you know, another designated person in your agency that's not going through core for supervisors, you will need to take the two-day coaching institute as well as a one-day field advisor and the field guide course. So those two classes are required in order to be a field advisor. If you are not a core uh, for supervisors attendee effective February 2020. So again, if you are going a new uh, supervisor going through core for supervisors and you will automatically receive this training and you will be prepared to be a field advisor by the end of that training program. If you need to access any of our trainings, such as the field guide training or the coaching institute, you can visit our website that's linked. Uh, you'll see the link above here, and this is our updated website. There is a sign in option on the right hand side, and you can select student account and go in and look at what classes you are enrolled in. So I just kind of point that out that, that there, that's where you're, you're going to sign in for your student profile to look at all the courses you're enrolled in. If you scroll down from this, this is the top of our website, but if you scroll down, you will find uh, a section for core for social workers. It looks like this. And when you um, click on that, it will take you into the different modules. So all the different classes for core for social workers. And at the bottom, you're gonna see training for instructors and field advisors. And that's where you can go in and look at any available field advisor trainings. So now we're gonna go through a brief overview of Core for Social Workers, version 3.0. Uh, Core for Social Workers was really built around the California Integrated Child Welfare Core Practice Model otherwise known as ICPM. 
so you'll see that uh, the core practice model really uh, includes all of the newest initiatives and practices that we're using in California. And it's structured in a way that follows the continuum of child welfare. So we look at prevention, engagement, assessment, planning and service delivery, monitoring and adapting, and transition as that continuum of care with our families. So the core 3.0 training blocks follow that similar um, continuum. So the practice areas are foundation, engagement, assessment, case planning and service delivery, monitoring and adapting, and transition. And there's classes associated with all of those different blocks. In the north, we call them modules which you'll see in a minute. Core 3.0 is really um, based on adult learning theory and is sequenced in a way that allows the students to um, receive their, really their knowledge base through the online learnings that they do. They come to class and do a lot of networking and skill building and group activities. And then the field-based learning is those field activities and that's um, done in the county, in their agency, with the support of you as a field advisor. And those are really that, you know, really built to be the transfer of knowledge um, from the online learning in the classroom. And this is really that on the job, in the field training um, that you can provide with, for them. Um, there are 100 level and 200 level classes, and both of those are all together in one um, continuous program that we offer. So the 200 level classes are at the end and they're more based on um, kind of a, a deeper dive on some topics they've already learned earlier. Core for Social Workers is technology based, which means that we have something called the Center for Human Resources Resource Barn. I'm sorry, Hu Center for Human Services Resource Barn. Um, and it is our resource page that has all of the class materials, it has all the field activity guides, everything in one place. So the workers and yourself can go to um, the link on the screen, which is a bit.ly shortened link, or you can also feel free to Google Core for Social Workers OER Commons, and it looks like this, and that will take you to the page. Now, when you open the page, um, there is a little login up here. You do not need to log in. A lot of people have questions about that and, and it's, it's a free um, open public resource. So you do not need to log in or register. Um, so you may have a, actually a box that comes up that says uh, view resource before you get here and you'll just hit view resource and get it, you'll, it'll take you right to here. So this is what our resource page looks like at the top. If you scroll down, you will see under participant resources, it will say classroom materials and it will have each module here listed. So you can click on each module and it will take you to the class materials for that module and all the classes involved in that. Um, and then the field activity materials are down here. Now any these are um, organized by module. So field activities do not start until module three. You'll simply select one of these items and it will take you to our field activity page. All of these links take you to the same page. This is what our core for social workers field activity page looks like. So um, you will scroll down and you will actually see the first field activity, which is interviewing. And you will see that there's a PDF document here. This is the interviewing field activity guide. So this is all that you need to, um, to be able to read about the, guy, uh, the activity and see what your role is and see what the social worker's role is on that guide. So it's really convenient because it's a PDF document you can uh, save it, you can email it, you can print it, and you'll have that document there to meet with your worker and 
have that discussion around your the, how you're going to um, support them with that activity and what how you can best prepare them for it. The field activity completion survey we will go over in a few minutes. That is linked underneath each activity guide. So you'll see throughout as you scroll down the page, each activity has a guide and the link to the completion survey. So by now, core participants are feeling pretty overwhelmed. They have full caseloads um, often in the north um, by the time they're getting through core, you know, going through core. Um, and they need a lot of support. So the more we can help support them, providing uh, protected time for them to do their online e-learnings, go to class without distractions, um, and complete their field activities, the better, as we know that this is a standardized statewide mandatory training program. And we really want to support workers in completing their training so that they feel better equipped to do the work in the field um, and that our outcomes for children and families are improved by that, by those workers being more supported and um, having the sufficient training they need. Some lessons learned in the past is that social workers often come to CORE not knowing who their field advisor is. Uh, so it's important that if you are the field advisor for the worker, that you, that you let them know that, because a lot of times, you know, some counties may have other designated people instead of the, the worker's uh, immediate uh, supervisor. And so if you can let them know, hey, I'm, I've gone through the training, I'm your field advisor, I'm going to be supporting you through these activities as you're going through core, that will be most helpful for them. Also having early conversations to start um, talking about your agreements, roles, when you're going to meet and talk about field activities um, is, is a great way to just get that conversation started early before the field activities are actually due. Um, with the, you know, the workers get lots of uh, reminders through email about what's coming up for them with classes and e-learnings due and things like that. And they also have their social worker passport to remind them of when their field activities are coming up um, to, being, to be completed uh, in their sequence of core activities. And finally, field activities may sound overwhelming, but they're not such a big deal. They are, they're doable. A lot of the workers already do a lot of the activities in their day-to-day -day work, and it's, so it'll be more of a natural flow. So we'll go through that in a minute. Um, in more detail. So CORE 3.0 at a glance, it's 10 modules with a duration of eight months. Um, we do have a fast track core that is held every summer and that's a three month duration. So that allows people to get through core a little quicker. Um, and it's really designed for people who don't have a full, don't have a caseload or a very, very minimal caseload so they can really focus on training. So it's really for your new hires. Um, there's 29 classes, 22 e-learnings, and nine field activities. And as you can imagine, that's a lot to complete. And a lot of people have a hard time um, completing all of that successfully on time. And so if people need to make up a class or an activity, or if you have any questions or technical difficulties, please email the academy at academy at ucdavis.edu. That's our main inbox and we try to be really prompt in responding to those questions. This is the social worker passport that I mentioned. This really allows people to complete, you know, keep up to date on what they've completed. This is not a official attendance record, but it is a great tool for workers to be able to keep track of what they've completed. And if there's any question that comes up later, um, if there's a discrepancy of they say they've attended something and we don't have that record, we can um, work with that worker to work out those discrepancies. So it's really, really important for them to be keeping track of all of their activities, including the field activities, when they've completed them, and um, that will also help you as a field advisor keep track of when you've uh, submitted the survey to show that they've completed the activities. 
Here's our website again. I just wanted to remind people, um, besides the social worker passport, they do have their student account on our website. If uh, at the top right hand corner, they can sign in and see what classes they've attended. So they log in to their report or their profile and then they will see their enrollment history and that will show their completed classes and that is also helpful for keeping track of core classes they've completed. This is a brief overview of the classes. So module one, they don't have any prerequisite e-learnings. They just come to class that first week and they have some foundational classes here. It's actually three days duration. Several classes are half day classes back to back. Module two, you'll see they have some e-learnings that are due before they come to class. So it's really important they, they complete those timely. Child and youth development is actually completed during module one, day one. So we do that together so they get the hang of what the e-learnings are like. Uh, so again, like I said, the classroom is really built on the knowledge they receive in the e-learning. So uh, if they don't complete the e-learning ahead of time, the, the instructor cannot keep, catch them up. So it's really at a detriment to them if they do not complete those e-learnings ahead of time. Module three, engagement, you'll see in green, these are all the e-learnings they have to complete before they come to class that month. Then they have three days of classes around engagement. And then this is where the field activities in purple show up. So there's four of them that are now due to get started on after module three classes. Now, they don't necessarily have to complete them before the next module. I know four activities is quite a bit, but uh, we encourage them to try to do their activities soon after their classes because it really builds on the knowledge. Module four, you'll see there's a couple of e-learnings before they come to class and then they'll have two additional field activities. As long as they complete their field activities before the end of core, they're good to go for graduating on time. Um, but we just remind people, please don't wait till the last minute to do your field activities because they will add up. There's nine of them. And as we know, people get busy, time goes by quickly, and um, we just want to help people stay on track. Module five is one e-learning before they come to class, and there's no field activities after that. Module six. There's five e-learnings before they come to class, and then they do their field activity, which is around initial case planning in a team setting. Monitoring and adapting and transition, module seven, there's five e-learnings before they come to class, and then they have two field activities due, which is around case plan update and transition case plans. Module eight is a 200 level deeper dive class. There's two e-learnings before they come to those classes. Module nine and 10 are classes only. They, at this point, they're at the end of core and they are, um, they have no more e-learnings or field activities. They're just uh, finishing up classes. So that's a quick at a glance with core. We're gonna quickly go over field advisor roles and responsibilities. So your main responsibilities are to meet with and support the new worker before, during, and after the field activities, promoting a safe learning environment, and utilizing your coaching skills that you're learning in your classes uh, in order to promote that desirable and sustainable growth for your worker. And also promoting the knowledge and skill development that aligns with desired practice. And finally, tracking completion of the field activities via the survey. Additional responsibilities, we just ask that you become familiar with CORE. Uh, I just briefly went over the classes, but just so you know where all the field activities land, and so that social worker passport document will be really helpful. You can find that on our CORE resource barn page. Become familiar with the field activities, so download the guides and just be familiar with them so you can have those conversations and support the workers the best that you can. 
and utilize your coaching skills. So like we talked about, the classes build on each other. So e-learnings um, are built upon in the classroom and then field activities are really that making that full connection to their transfer of learning. Um, the skill-based coaching model is what is taught in the Coaching Institute. And for new supervisors going through CORE in 2020 and beyond, you will be learning um, different coaching models. So what is coaching? Coaching is defined as uh, structured focus interaction using appropriate strategies, tools, and techniques to promote desirable and sustainable change for the benefit of the learner, in turn making a positive impact on the organization. So again, this is really um, key, using your coaching skills to help the workers build their critical thinking and really relying on their own expertise and um, answers that they have uh, and really building on those strengths that they already have. So as supervisors, you're usually um, either doing on the spot informal coaching or planned formal coaching. And when we're talking about the field activities, it's really around formal planned sit down conversations and coaching. This is at a glance, the skill-based coaching model, model for field advisors. So this is something that you will learn in your coaching classes, but just as a, a reminder of how to support your students and your workers um, who are going through CORE, this is a great way to just kind of remind yourself of the different stages of supporting your workers. So, Joint planning is really setting the stage and establishing rapport, establishing your agreements for how often you're gonna meet. Observation and demonstration. So you may be doing some modeling for them and teaching them if they're brand new workers. Analysis and self-reflection using great solution focused questions to help them um, debrief. This could be using the three questions. What worked well for you during that activity? What could we Maybe there's some upgrades or things you were worried about. And then what are your next steps for further growth and develop, skill development? And then giving their, um, them strength-based reflection and feedback. And then next steps. So planning for, again, that deeper um, skill development. So that's just a quick, at a glance, there's a lot of additional coaching tools and resources on the field advisor and the field guide class page. So definitely check that out and this the link is below. So now we're going to go over field activities really quickly. We have module three. These are the activities, the module five, module six, and module seven. Again, as long as you're continuing to work with your workers to complete these activities by the end of core, um, that's going to ensure that they are able to graduate on time. They can be done out of order as well, if need be. The field activity guides are really structured. So once you open those up and check those out, they have the learning objectives for each activity, the description, the field advisor and social worker tasks uh, to be done before, during, and after the activity. And some of them have applicable worksheets and resources. Please note that field activities should be completed using active cases whenever possible. That means that if a worker has a caseload, they should always do their activities with their uh, families on their caseload. If a worker is a non-carrying um, worker, case-carrying worker, then they may need to do some observation, and that's an option. So they can observe some, another worker doing that activity, and that will be, um, you know, count as their learning activity. So this is just a reminder of a conversation you can have just to prepare the worker for the field activities. So, you know, that you're gonna be shifting from so supervisor to field advisor, and that may look a little different um, because you're gonna be doing more of the coaching and reflection with them versus some of the more um, workload, uh, focus of being your, the supervisor. 
Um, what are the roles and responsibilities for each of you? What's the purpose of the field activity? So just having that initial conversation to set the stage and, and also talk about communication styles and, and how you can put best work together. So briefly, these are the activities. Again, the guides are really there to give you really in-depth information on how to complete the activities. With that being said, I do wanna say that the field activity guides are very comprehensive, they're very long, and can be overwhelming. So please um, just use them as a guide. It's not, they're not checklists. You don't have to go through every single thing in the guide, but it's really a, a nice way to provide some guidance and suggestions on questions you can ask to help the worker prepare for the activity, helping the worker know exactly how to do the activity and then um, a debrief discussion and there's lots of helpful questions and things to consider. ICWA is uh, around finding local ICWA resources to support child welfare outcomes and reinforce the value of keeping an Indian child connected to their culture and community. So you're going to be talking about your local um, county specific protocols around ICWA, the tribes, tribal connections and resources. Um, and this can also be done in a group if you have a lot of workers going through core at the same time because you're going to have the same um, information to cover in this one. Fairness and equity is looking at your data related to disparity and this also really highlights talking about bias and um, what are what's um, the disparity in your county and what's your county culture um, who is in out-of-home care, so um, based on ethnicity, based on different trends, um, you're, you'll definitely be looking at the UC Berkeley website data and kind of looking at um, what are some maybe institutional biases in our county and what are ways that we can um, be aware of our own bias. So it's very, um, really, really rich and important topic and this one I think can also be done in a group setting. If you have several workers going through core, they can look at the data together and have a group discussion. And then you can follow up with an individual discussion with each of them about how, is that, how does that impact you? What are some bias that you see um, come up for yourself and how do you address that? These are also some other questions to consider. So as a supervisor, what are some of your hot button issues that could possibly impact your work? Um, and what are some you know, biases that really drive you crazy? And how can you also kind of guard against that when you're working with your worker? Or how can you have those um, transparent discussions with them? There is a worksheet that goes with that activity as well that's helpful. Interviewing, this is something that all social workers do on a regular basis. So this is um, just kind of guiding them through um, the purpose of an interview that they choose to do for this activity, who they're going to interview, what information needs to be collected. If you have specific forms that your county uses, such as the three houses or maybe a family assessment questionnaire, um, those would be things that you would want to introduce to the worker if they're new and they don't know. Um, so just kind of being, thinking of all the different things in your county that specifically that you have people use and then how do you ask them to document their chronos or contacts. And thinking uh, also just consider what interview tips you might have for your worker based on these different um, stakeholders that they may be interviewing. Exploring family relationships. This includes using either a genogram, eco map, or a safety circle, which is a SOP uh, tool to document um, family and extended family and community and tribal connections that will support um, permanent connections for the children, youth, young adults, and families. So how, essentially, how do you document the safety and support network and the child and family team in your county? Um, these are suggestions 
to using these three tools, but there are um, other options. You can use whatever you use in your county. You may have a specific tool you use. Um, and so that's, that's really specific to your county and you can um, go over with the worker what, what that entails. We do have examples on our resource page of the genogram and the ecomap and the safety circle. So you'll see those here linked underneath this activity guide on our website. <clears throat> Completing SDM tools. Um, the workers asked to complete one of the following safety tools and one of the following risk tools. So again, they're, they're doing two tools total, uh, one of each type. And this may be challenging for some workers who don't regularly do these tools, but it's really designed to help each worker learn all the tools of SDM, regardless of what um, workload they have. And this also may include uh, observation. So if you have a worker who does not complete any of these tools, maybe they're an adoptions worker, an RFA worker, an intake worker who may not be doing risk tools, um, they may have to observe that. The next four activities are the teaming activities. And so they are really designed to um, have some kind of teaming element, which could be a CFT meeting. It could be a meeting with the safety network in the uh, family home. Um, and so for this one, this is safety and risk in teams, this could be focused on safety planning. And so it's, you know, maybe the worker is out developing a safety plan. Even if they're not an investigative worker, I, I would argue every meeting has some element of safety in it because we're always looking at safety in child welfare. And so this could, you know, be expanded to different types of meetings. Um, for ongoing workers who have a FR, FM, PP caseload. The, the final three are also teaming activities and you'll see there's a different focus for each one. There's the initial case plan um, is the next one and that um, because the child and family team meetings are now uh, required for case planning, this is an excellent way to complete this activity. And perhaps you can have someone who may need to observe this activity uh, come in and with the permission of the family be able to observe the meeting. Um, uh, definitely look at the guide for different examples of meetings, but there's several different types of meetings. You could do a TILP meeting for an older youth, um, any kind of safety mapping meeting or safety discussion um, about you know, what needs to be in the case plan to ensure safety for the child, uh, any kind of case plan discussion. And then for the observation option, you'll see on our website, we have two different guides listed. We have option A, which is for active cases, and we have option B for uh, people who need to observe the activity if they don't have an active case to work with. So you'll see there's an observation worksheet that's linked as well. And this can be used by the worker who is observing the meeting just to kind of take down some notes. And also if you as the field advisor are observing that meeting, you can also use this worksheet. I would also say the worker themselves could use this worksheet to keep them on track and make sure they're keeping, you know, they're addressing all the, the items they need to uh, in the meeting. So. It's just a great tool to have. But please make sure that there's, uh, that you realize that there's two different uh, versions of the guide for these activities, these teaming activities. The final two are case plan update and transition plan. So these, uh, the case plan update is focused on updating the case plan and what needs to be considered for that. And it's a teaming activity as well. And the transition planning is any type of transition you could think of. If a child is about to age out or youth, youth is about to, you know, turn 21 and 
leave care. Um, it could be any kind of placement change that, you know, and how are we supporting the child and the family around that case closure. Um, any kind of transition you could think of can be used for this. So get creative. This is really an individual process. Um, there's no audits about looking at how you're completing these activities. It's really based on the individual worker and their needs and um, their workload and how um, to best make sure that they're learning these basic foundational concepts. So it really, there really is room for creativity and um, any kind of um, individualization for workers. These are just some questions to consider. Thinking about how you would help a worker prepare them for the family, uh, actually prepare for the meeting, which includes preparing the family for the meeting. And then what are some questions you can ask to help debrief the activity? I've talked a little bit about group activity ideas. So these two are well done in groups. There's some ideas for bundling. So instead of doing each activity separately, there are ways to combine some of these activities to make it a little more doable as well. And we do have a handout uh, that includes this information that um, we'll make sure to include with this webinar. Tracking is pretty quick and easy. Um, the hardest part is remembering to do it. So like I showed you on the field activity page, the survey is linked in several areas. And we just ask that you complete the survey after each activity versus waiting until all activities are completed. This ensures that we have up-to-date records and we can accurately tell you tomorrow, oh, the, this worker has completed um, X, Y, and Z activities and still needs to complete um, these other ones. So if you complete the, acti the survey as you go, it'll be much more accurate and up to date. So again, like I showed you, the link is here. It will take you to this page. There's also a direct bit.ly link that you can type in and find that survey. You can capture multiple field activities at one time, but each form is limited to one social worker. So you'll enter your information, you'll enter the social worker's information and what activities they've completed, and then you can hit next and it will take you to a new form that you can then um, enter on a, uh, the information about a different social worker. So, Again, you can come back to this as many times as you need to. Every time they complete a field activity, you enter this. And um, that way we have those accurate, up-to-date results. If, thank you so much for attending this webinar. I hope it was helpful to give you just some basic information of where to find things and what our survey entails. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me directly. My name is uh, Tammy McCaleb, and I'm, my information is on the screen, as well as Caitlin Ash, who works closely with CORE as well. Um, for any general inquiries, you can also email academy at ucdavis.edu. Thank you very much. <laughs>